know you. No, really, I know you. I know your name. You are the light of the world. I know your nature. You are divine. <clears throat> I know that shining the light of the world is our business. It's our assignment. The light that we shine is the light of consciousness, is it not? Consciousness. What you think is a matter of consciousness. So your thoughts are significant. Conscious thought, when you turn your conscious thought toward yourself, what you think about yourself, what you think about your conditions and circumstances, what you think about others and about what is happening in the world around you, it's all part of what you broadcast. It becomes the light. Look, Jesus didn't say whether the light was bright or dim, whether the light was helpful or not, right? The light we shine is the light of what we know ourselves to be at any time. I have been known to think of myself as a dim bulb. How about you? Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> We've heard, and I'm a, I'm a social media person, so every time something terrible in the world around us happens, and they've been far too frequent for our ease these days, Every time that Silent Unity uh, throws out there a prayer in those times, we get a reverberating response back, and we hear it all around us. Enough with the thoughts and prayers already. We need to do something. I cringe a little when I hear that. Something in me really shifts because I absolutely understand what's being said. I understand the need for action. I also know that Unity's primary teachings give us something that's critical before we act. Thoughts and prayers. This is the hallmark of our message in Unity. Thoughts and prayers. So let's get back to this matter of thoughts as consciousness. So my con conscious thoughts, when I speak what I speak, when I hear myself think, when I put out the light of that into the world, that's a matter of my consciousness. But it's not the only factor in consciousness, is it? Because there's another aspect to consciousness, and that is the unconscious thoughts. In the unconscious lies hidden, that's why they're called unconscious beliefs, that give way to thoughts that sometimes we are not conscious of. But out that thought flows from us. Do you know what I mean? Like so, you know, I have some experience with this example. When I hold thoughts of self-criticism, Anybody else join me in that sometimes? When I harbor that kind of thought, it's, it's easy for me to make it mean that something is the matter with me. It's easy for me to believe that, that, that I'm unworthy, that I don't belong. But at the very time when I hold those thoughts, if I would come to understand that there's something else going on, and that is that in that unconscious place where I am worried about belonging, or about surviving, or about being enough, being good enough, that, that I think that when I hold that 
that self-criticism that it's because I don't belong and I don't fit in, I'm not good enough, but actually it's just the opposite that is the darn truth of us. It's because my true nature is one with all. It's because I can only be divine love and nothing else. It's because of that that I feel the dissonance between what I am and what I'm afraid of. Does this make some sense to you? That what's happening is a mirror. It's a shine of a mirror of false belief that's just living underneath the surface of my thinking. It's not truth. It's what I like to say lovingly and not really dismissively, but I call it nonsense. <laughs> so our unconscious thoughts feed our feelings and our reactions and the way we think consciously. Understood? That's what happens. So the good news, too, is that there's another aspect of consciousness at work. And it's always at work. And it's what, in unity, we refer to as the superconscious. You've heard that term? The superconscious is our true identity. It's our divine identity. It's our Christ consciousness. It's that overarching truth of being where we can rightly say, I am the light of the world, and I am here to reflect the light of love, the light of wisdom, the light of strength, the light of all that I can imagine God to be. So when we put those three aspects of consciousness together, we can see that our thoughts matter. We can see that what we beam into the world around us has to do with which aspect of consciousness is operating right now. <laughs> and if I'm not conscious, then very often it's the unconscious that's operating. And this is why when people say stop with the thoughts and prayers, we need action, that, the, that what happens inside of Linda when I hear that is, unfortunately, when we're in that stance, we're in an operation of fear. We're in that unconscious fear, and the actions that spring from that are going to produce more of that in the world around us. And so that's why we get into protests, why we get into violent actions. They are literally reactions. It's reactionary action coming from the unconscious fears. It's helpful to understand this, isn't it? Because when we understand this, then we can become more clear about what our purpose is. And we can add something to the conversation and to the actions that could be more helpful. We're so fortunate, those who, who practice a unity way of living and who come and study the unity teachings, because here's where it really matters. Our thoughts matter. But look, when I'm operating in that unconscious, hating Linda, you know, criticizing Linda, condemning Linda, when I'm living in that swirl of non-truth, it's very hard to come to some clear action. It's very hard to be helpful. And yet, we have a method by which we can heal that unconscious that's operating. And that method, we all know, is prayer. <laughs> prayer is to correct consciousness. Prayer is to shift from operating in the unconscious to asserting the superconscious or our Christ nature, our God consciousness, our I am, and bringing that to the surface so that our conscious mind can reflect that true identity. That's the whole purpose of prayer. And whether that's a personal purpose, whether there's something going on in your personal life that you can heal through the power of prayer, or whether it's your thoughts 
and prayers about the world and its conditions that you want to hold, it works the same way. Can you see? And are you with me? Yeah. Anybody there? Listen, I wanted to tell you a personal story about how I have, how I have demonstrated that in my life. And I would rather we pray than me talk some more about it. So I will just say this, and then we will have a period of meditation and prayer where we can practice this this morning, all right? And that is, that is the, the five primary teachings of unity. If we just cling to those, prayer is about identifying each of those, how they're operating right now in my life, how I can bring them to bear in the things that are of concern to me right here and now. And if I can just do that, I have prayed, and I have that chance of shifting my awareness from unconscious to conscious, and that conscious is overlaid or led by the superconscious, right? By the, by the divine identity of me, by my I am nature. So our five principles, short and sweet, one power. There's not any other power. So anybody I'm making that evil other, any, any situation I'm making wrong or powerful as a power against me, I can correct that when I come into prayer and acknowledge there is only one power. And I center myself in one, power of oneness. Second, divine identity. My identity is divine. I can, I can try to escape from that. I can try to pretend it isn't so, but all the while, the superconscious of me is part of my consciousness. It's the reality of me, and I can choose it. So, divine identity. Third, mind action. Well, that's what we're talking about here, is transforming our own thoughts through the power of prayer, which is the fourth pr practice, of, is prayer, is centermost to us, and we pray so that we can clear that mind and come into clarity. And the fifth one is demonstration or action. So we have these, everything that needs to happen here in these times for world peace is embedded in those very simple teachings. And really, the demonstration or the action that we take, if it's done through the transforming of mind, through prayer, now it has a chance to be really helpful. And what I'd like to th say is that our doing flows from our being. So when I am thinking of myself as an only human being, well, there's no surprise the kind of actions that follow that will not necessarily be lined up with what is most needed in this world. But when I know what I am, I am divine, now my actions can show that. And the light that I shine becomes that. Does this make sense to you all? Let's turn our minds to prayer, please, for a few minutes. I understand there's some music.